Tawandi. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's the uh, Konkani word for quilt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you look at Africa and see what's done there with the PC and so forth, you know, it seems logical that they would have brought that with them, but improvised with what's <coughs> and what can be done. So there, it's all uh, recycled clothes right. and scraps from tailors. Right. Right. They never go out and buy fabric right. Right. for a quilt. Like now, people are even making fabric for quilts. Wow. Yes, no. yes. <laughs> What's the other side? Your, your, the velvet in the part. center. It's that central. Yes, yeah, that's, that's thanks to Susan. Yeah. That's a when I got to that point, I just that was just crying out to be the same. And it leads through the quilt to the other side. I mean, I love that. Mm -hmm. Entry into the other side. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when you're making these, you don't know what's going to happen. No, it's it's pure because you, you make them from the, the edge. Yeah, you I start know. on the. Sherry told me that. Yeah, you start on the edge and you work towards the center, and then when you start to get near the center, it's like. You better resolve it. What? What? Now? What am I going to do now? How do you bring it? To yeah, you have to bring it to a climax. Yes. It's 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 and sometimes it's quite um takes weeks. Scary. It's like you don't know. In fact, one day I was sitting on the porch of. Uh, one of the women who had reached that point uh, with a little one. She was making for me to show me all every step. She was making a little one. She got to the center, and you know, you're sitting there on the ground, of course, and and then looking at your at your stash, trying to decide now what? You know, what am I going to select to put here? And she was doing that for quite a while. Then her next door neighbor. Uh, who has lived, their grandmothers lived next door to each other, that kind of a culture. Um, uh, she went home and then she came back. She stepped up on the porch and she just threw a couple of pieces down and walked away. And I, as, they, as though, here, I know you're stuck, you know, you might want these for the middle, right? <laughs> and of course they were perfect. Margaret, what, what is, as you're going and interacting with the uh, quilt shows and museums now, their take on uh, because what you're presenting to them has to be really outside of what they're used to looking at. Well, I haven't even seen that. The only time I ever saw that was the one we went to together. Yeah. That was my first uh, part of an exhibit. It was a Sakwa show for a Northern California. It was up in Placerville, Blue Line Gallery, something like that. And so uh, I went and I just stood on the other side of the room. I wanted to see how, the, because I know, like, these don't, these don't fit in, in the normal quilt show. I mean, these, they're not like anything else. And they're brown And so, yeah, I, it doesn't bother me, but I think it helps explain. I think that people just don't know what to do. How how to respond. They don't know what, you know, they, you have an idea of how you like what you think quilts are, and these don't really fit that. Well, you were awarded for your handwork. Well, that was an, that's another one, another show. But with that show, um, I never saw anybody stop and look at mine. Mm -hmm. They walked right by it.